Good evening, I am Jack Fuji and welcome to the third session of Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. Focus on Agriculture is a one credit course offered by your College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management here at the University of Hawaii at Hilo. And we come to you live every Thursday evening from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. This semester on Focus in Agriculture, we're featuring another cooking class where we're bringing in various uh, cooks and uh, people, actually. And uh, they're preparing for us various dishes, emphasizing local agricultural commodities. Before I go on, if I could have the Elmo, please. Uh, if you have to get a hold of me, there are several ways you can get a hold of me. One is by uh, snail mail at uh, 200 West Kawili Street, Hilo, Hawaii, 96720. And you can get a hold of me by phone at 933-0850 or by fax at 974-7674. And for those of you on email, you can email me at jfuji at hawaii.edu. Also, I'd like to say a few words about the College of Agriculture, Forestry and Natural Resource Management. We have programs in animal science uh, with a pre-veterinary medicine option and a production option. We also have an agribusiness program for those who are interested in the business area of uh, agriculture. We also have an agri uh, agroecology and environmental quality program, an aquaculture program, crop protection, general agriculture, and tropical horticulture. So if you know anyone who is interested in an excellent hands-on degree in agriculture, please give us a call and we'll give you all the information. Also, for those of you who are taking the course for credit, uh, your recipes are due in my office uh, on or before April 4th. And when you uh, write your recipes up, make sure that you list all the ingredients up at the top, how much, and then on the bottom section, just explain how you put the dish together, okay? And uh, also, for those of you who are cookbook uh, collectors. We have a lot of different uh, agricultural focus on agriculture cookbooks. So if you're interested in our uh, last semester volume or the uh, earlier editions, uh, please give me a call and I'll give you all the information on the cookbooks. And at approximately 8 p.m., those of you in the viewing audience and of course those of you here in the classroom can call in and ask questions of our guests this evening. We have a very interesting presentation tonight. Uh, tonight we're featuring the University of Hawaii at Hilo Campus Center staff and students. So we're going to have a real interesting class tonight. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the class over to Ellen Cusano, who's the director of the Campus Center. And uh, I'll, I'll let her introduce uh, all the other students that are with her this evening. So Ellen, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Hi. Uh, I'd like to start over here on my left with uh, the person who got us involved here tonight. <laughs> this is Matt Lewis, and Matt is a building manager at the Campus Center, which means that he's responsible for groups who come in in the night or weekends or holidays when the regular staff's not there. And Matt is also chair of the Board of Student Publications, uh, and the board oversees the newspaper and the student magazine. And here on my right is Moana Kiskarin. Moana works in our office and she's the student assistant who is in charge of all our fiscal paperwork. She also was last year's UH Hilo Student Employee of the Year. And next to her is Diane Crichton and Diane is also a building manager for the Campus Center. Diane also has another hat she wears and she is the treasurer for USA, the UH Hilo Student Association. And on her right is Patrick Kabuya Dao, and Patrick is works in our game room, our info booth. He's the guy who takes the student IDs, and Patrick has another hat too, including the one he's got on backwards. But Patrick is also um, an event planner for Student Activities Council, and he was responsible for the great car show and concert we had at the beginning of the year. Yeah. 
Um, okay, and uh, Alan, did you say you had a video that you wanted to show us uh, about something about your campus center? We do have a video, and I haven't seen it, so I can't really tell you that I really want to show <laughs> it, but we do have a video. Okay, let's roll it. And uh, I know it's a real good one. Here it is. Uh, What's <coughs> happening here? Okay, this, this is our oh. campus center dining room, so Dexo. It's the first floor of um, campus center. It's a little bit of what they cook. That's the deli sandwich bar. Looks like a club sandwich. I think you folks are going to do better cooking tonight, right? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is our so office. Why don't you tell us a little bit about Campus Center here? Well, the Campus Center is everybody's living room. If you're between classes, you want to go sit down and watch TV, um, have your lunch, grab a snack, shoot some pool, play on the computers, come on down to the Campus Center. Okay. This is Dee, and she'll take care of all your needs. Just come on down and I'll help you with whatever you need. <laughs> so, um, is this where I get my ID? No, actually. <laughs> you need to go to the game room for IDs. Alright, this is the lava landing where you get your IDs. There's a cyber lounge, <coughs> game room, some of the games you have, ping pong, pool table. It's also where our Starbucks will be coming in soon. Well, how soon, Ellie? Soon. Soon. Very soon. There's somebody getting ID. It's our cyber lounge, brand new furniture. This week. Yeah. Group of students studying in our. Hey, <laughs> doctor, I was getting counseled. Uh, there's like somebody getting a TB shot at our nurse's office, health room. That's on the second floor as well. This is one of my offices. Hey Mel. Hi. So what do you do in this office? I do requisitions for the Board of Student Publications. And that would be what position? The business manager. Ah. So what else does the board do? We handle the two student publications, which are Kei Kalahia and which is a student newspaper and a literary magazine. And that's all by student works, right? Yes. So you publish those. Uh -huh. <laughs> right on. Who, who does the writings in the papers? Other students? Or? Yes, yes. It's all student produced. Um, Raynette Moreno is one of the writers. Um, and Zachary um, Myrtle wrote a piece. Um, let's see. Uh, so basically it's just about what's going on on campus and around the community and stuff? Right, right. Especially things that concern students. Okay. How about you tell me a little bit about Kani Lehua? Alright, this is the student literary magazine. What's in the magazine? In the magazine is this artwork, these stories, <laughs> and anything else students want to uh, contribute related to the arts or literature. And we have a, every semester we have a contest. And the first prize is $100, 50 for second, 25 for third. And we have a reception at the end where you can come talk about your, your uh, work. So we encourage you to submit whatever you can. Yes, me. It's University Disability Services Office. Uh, we provide support services to student faculty and staff with disabilities here at UHIVO. And the public, let's not forget the public, um, for events that are sponsored by UH. Uh, this is the Student Service yeah, Corps. What we do here is uh, they have one, but they don't all like, the different um, student service projects like Breakthrough Adventures, they don't like stuff. America Reads, America Counts. Mm -hmm. Um, hunger Project, yeah. uh, Fair Trade, New Student Orientation, yeah. Service yeah. Learning, and there will be other new projects coming up as students take on community and campus projects. Uh, that was a short tour of our campus center. It will continue next week when USA comes on. And First thing I'm going to cook tonight is a uh, beef with oyster sauce, um, 
Stir fry. So, everybody ran away. <laughs> yeah, the first thing you're gonna do is um, chop up your steak just into small pieces. So, Matt, uh, what are you, a senior now? Um, I'm not sure, Jack, actually. <laughs> Okay, uh, but you Didn't are a student here at yes, UH Hilo. Yes, I'm a student here at UH Hilo. And uh, I, I noticed you're a jack of all trades because you, last year I, I noticed you were working with the auxiliary services. Yeah, I was a building maintenance worker with auxiliary services. And so you do building and maintenance and you do Correct. cooking and uh, you work in the campus center this year. Correct. So, so it looks like Keeps uh, me busy. pretty much a jack of all trades. I try. And what's your major? Uh, my major is geography. Okay. Thanks. And uh, what kind of beef are you cutting? What? Um, this is a, a sirloin steak. Got it from KTA this afternoon. Okay. And you just uh, want to trim off all the fat before you start. So you have nice lean meat. Yeah, nice lean meat. Okay. Take all the gristle out. No chewy pieces. And about how much meat? Um, you say that is roughly. Well, I'll give you a recipe for about half a pound, half okay. pound flank of steak. And I've got some prepared already, uh, soaked in a marinade, but um, I'm gonna be doubling the recipe tonight. Okay. But I'll read it off as just a regular okay. recipe. Okay, good. So, got this chopped up. I'm gonna make our uh, marinade for our steak here. And for those of you who just joined us, uh, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the University of Hawaii at Hilo Campus Center. And uh, this is the place where students can go lounge around, eat, and uh, do all kinds of things there. Okay, what, what, what's next, Matt? Okay, I'm gonna uh, just mix up some marinade for the beef. Later, yeah, I think you can leave it. Yeah, get in there and oh, help okay, him that's out. It. Give him some moral support there, folks. You give me the ginger. The vegetable oil. Uh, we're gonna start off with um, some sherry here just to soak the beef. What is that? Sherry? Sherry. Okay, that's that's not show you, that's no, sherry. sherry. Little uh, alcohol in there. A little bit. Okay. Helps make it a little sweeter. Uh, helps uh, soften up the steak a little bit too. Okay. I have to say thank you to Sodexo for helping us with these ingredients tonight. Bridget, Kyle, and Reed are all helping out this afternoon. Okay. Let's see. That was a teaspoon of sherry with two teaspoons of shoyu here. Okay. Um, I have one and one half tablespoon, uh, teaspoons of ginger juice, which I have to make right here on the spot. Okay. Where's the crusher? One and a half teaspoon of ginger. Yeah, so you just want to um, clean your ginger off. Just get rid of all of the skin. You can do this is um, just clean it up. And you can put it in your garlic press actually if it's strong enough and just squeeze the juice right out of the ginger. So do you do a lot of cooking at home, Matt? Well, I used to, but since with school and work and all the things I do, I'm pretty busy, so I haven't cooked as much. I like to cook, it's fun. But if you had to, you can. Oh yeah, I love cooking. Okay. You just squeeze it out and all the juice comes out like that. Okay. Can you throw the garlic in, I mean the ginger in there also? Or you could, you could throw it right in after you crush it if you want. You don't have to soak this um, that long, about 15 minutes. Just okay. let the beef absorb it. The beef will absorb it pretty fast. So this is beef with oyster sauce stir fry. Correct. This is the first time I'm actually cooking with measurements. I usually just throw things together, Jack. Okay. Usually use your eyeball, huh? Yep. Just go to taste whatever I want to um, eat that night or, you know, cook up. Well, I'm glad you're doing measurements. Too. Yeah. It took me a while to get these. I'll cut a uh, tablespoon of cornstarch. Okay. 
So how'd you come across this recipe? Well, I make stir fry a lot of, uh, quite often. It's a pretty simple recipe actually. I mean, fast, easy to cook, you know. And just wanted, I had to find a recipe, so um, I asked my grandma if she got this for me actually. I got this out of her cookbook. Well, I thank you very much, Matt, for bringing the crew here tonight because uh, yeah, they were we had a cancellation tonight, so we had to get somebody real quick, and uh, you came in and bailed me out. No problem. Appreciate it. Staff didn't know. The campus center staff, I kind of sprung it on them uh, right. last Monday, this past Monday. Thanks for the notice. <laughs> but you see, they're all here. They're not complaining. So I'm going to put... Um, so, someone in the class here volunteered you folks, or what happened anyway? Yeah, you see the guy right there, blue sweatshirt, Melvin, works oh. a sack, yeah, he volunteered us. We're going to put uh, three tablespoons of, um, I have here some uh, virgin olive oil. You can use um, any type of salad oil, it works. Okay. So one, two, three. All right. And then? Got it all in there. Just want to mix it up. See if I got a spoon here. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Just want to mix it all up. So Ellen, uh, why don't you get, it, uh, Ellen, why don't you get in here and uh, maybe I can ask you some questions about the campus center. Like now, uh, you have like a little uh, uh -huh. place where students can uh, use a computer over there? Uh-huh. We have a, uh, we're, we're calling it the Cyber Lounge, and there are 10 computer stations, brand new, well not brand new, but they're, they're relatively new computers, um, internet connected, and we also have a printer in there. And you can use your singles card from the library to print in there. Uh, in be, when in the old email stations at the campus center, you had to you um, you had to direct the the printing to the library and then walk all the way over to the library to pick up your papers. But mm. now you can just do that right there in the campus center. And as Matt said, we got brand new furniture this week. So if you haven't been by recently, come by. Really comfortable. Really comfortable. Matt tried to take one home already, but we got caught busted. him. We caught him. And Matt, what did you add? Uh, well, I just added a little bit more shoyu. It looked like it needed a little bit more. Okay, about how much shoyu did you put in there all together, roughly? Um, no, Jack? A few tablespoons, a few teaspoons I put okay. all together. Okay. You just want to uh, pour this in with your beef. Okay. Mm, stir it around. And Ellen, to use the facility, is it free or is it only for students? Well, um, student organizations and campus departments can use the campus center for free um, most of the time. Kay. There are a couple of times when we do charge for different things. We have, we, it's also open to the community to use um, nonprofits in the community and other um, county or state agencies can use the facility. It's not available for um, private groups to use though. Okay. But uh, um, people can, Mar um, Sodexo, excuse me, Sodexo has a catering department and anyone can take advantage of that. And that's all in the campus center, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. We have a lot of things going on and I think the thing that we're all waiting for is, um, be hopefully soon, um, within the next couple of weeks, we're going to be starting up our cafe. It's called Lava Java, and we will be serving Starbucks, the, the full line of Starbucks except for Frappuccinos. So Bill Chen has just been, our, our director of technology on campus has just been waiting for that for months. Okay, and what you doing now, Matt? Okay, what I did is I just took the one I mixed up here with, uh, added it what I made a little while earlier, make a larger portion for the class here. Oh, okay. And should let that sit a little bit. and. Move on here. Get a little bit cleaned up. Let's see. 
Give me some more Wait, front So pad. Do, do students have to show their ID card before they go in to use the computers and use the game room and things like that, Ellen? They do need to show their ID. They have to have a current ID, in fact, and not just any ID, but a current UHH or HCC ID to use the game room, to play in the game room. And each student with a current ID can bring a guest into the game room. Um, we don't really check who's using the computers. But you do need to be a student because you need to have a UHH password to be to access the computers. And um, you, both HCC and UHH students can get that password every semester at the library. You know, sometimes the faculty like to fool around a little bit. Can we go to the game room? Absolutely. <laughs> if there are oh, any thanks. faculty or staff who want to challenge some of our game room regulars or just anybody in the game room, that would be great. But yeah, it's open to faculty and staff as well. Okay. I, I, I'll challenge you, Jack, to air hockey. Ooh. <laughs> good luck. Uh, yeah. All I gotta say is good luck. Yeah. I beat Matt. Yeah. Uh, well, if you caught can, me off guard, she's a ringer. If yeah. you can beat Matt, you can beat me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Jack. What I did here is just uh, put some oil in some uh, pan here, heating okay. that up. I'm gonna add our beef. I'm gonna cook that, and then we'll be uh, starting to add our vegetables first. Or fry. Okay. So we've got a lot of dishes tonight. Uh, you gonna be able to do everything tonight, uh, Matt? I hope so. I don't you know, know if anybody else wants to start on there, so I'm... We, we, we have a crab, uh, imitation crab cream cheese wonton. Uh, we're gonna have crispy fried wonton, uh, poo poo chicken, and uh, Ellen's <laughs> famous chili dish, and amazing <laughs> apple crunch and a Samoan banana soup called Suafai. So we're gonna have all kinds of stuff tonight. Oh, should be good. So what, what you gonna do next, Matt? I'm gonna uh, just make the oyster sauce. Um, hey, my vegetable's blocking the recipe. I'm um, just gonna make some sauce to go with the vegetables and the uh, steak when we put it in the frying pan. Okay. Start with uh, two tablespoons of oyster sauce. All right. Put it in your bowl. I think that's the secret ingredient. That oyster sauce yep. is really good. Some good stuff. Adds a lot of flavor to the dish. I'm gonna go and put a tablespoon of shoyu. Okay. Uh, no. I'm gonna put a half a teaspoon of sugar. Okay. I'm gonna find the sugar back there. And maybe sugar, what sugar, we'll sugar. do is we'll get a three ring circus here uh, while Matt is uh, preparing the beef with oyster sauce stir fry. Maybe we can get Patrick here to start his uh, imitation crab cream cream cheese wonton. Just put some sugar in there. Okay. Mm, some salt. A little bit of salt. Okay. See, where's the salt? Where's the salt? Hope I brought it. So Patrick, you've pinch. been cooking a long time? Not bad, you could say. <laughs> okay. Since what, this afternoon, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Can't stand wontons no more. <laughs> Put a pinch of salt in there. So this uh, and we get some more sherry. Mix the knives up this wonton, uh, how is it? Pretty good stuff. Oh, very good. Um, yeah, one of our uh, experimental tasters actually liked it this afternoon. But what I'll be doing, Jack, is an imitation crab cream cheese wonton. Okay. Okay. Wait. Oh, you can explain as you go along. Okay. What I'm going to be starting with is actually the shredding of the imitation crab. Um, you can buy this in any supermarket. Um, usually it doesn't come this big. It's like a... Whoops. Oops. This is like a family size or Costco size actual imitation crab. And we're going to actually use just roughly a pound of imitation crab. Okay. Roughly. Or so. And so. put it on. And so, Matt, if you do something new over there, just uh, pop okay. in and tell us what well, you're doing. Well, I finished mixing up our 
Oyster sauce here, I added a teaspoon of sherry after the pinch of salt. And we're gonna add that after we get the beef cooked. I'm gonna add that in with the vegetables. I need a small bowl. Okay. And again, for those of you who just joined us, you're watching Agriculture 194A, Focus on Agriculture. And this evening we're featuring the University of Hawaii at Hilo Campus Center. And they're gonna prepare for us all kinds of goodies. So we have Matt up here doing a beef with oyster sauce stir fry. So how's it coming? It's coming along. I'm just cooking okay. the beef right now. So, uh, Pat, uh, what are you, uh, what's your major? Um, I'm a communication major, Jack. Communications? Yeah. And what are your plans? Um, well, I'm actually interning with the radio station right now. So, I'll see how far that's going to go after graduation. Um, so, this is a natural for you. Not bad. <laughs> All right. You could say. Well, right now I'm actually just like picking everything off, just making sure everything's like all breaking apart and stuff. Okay. So just trying, basically shredding everything. Okay, shredding up the uh, imitation crab. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Got it. This and might take a while. <laughs> how's the how's the how's the uh, stir fry coming there, it's Matt? It's coming along. Got a bunch of beef here. Okay, maybe we can get the overhead camera too. to look into that. Uh, Walk there that Matt has. So I think all it's kind of small. There you go. Oh yeah, it looks pretty good. Just want to cook your beef first before you add your vegetables. The vegetables, the vegetables will cook real fast. Okay. So it's a beef that'll take a little while, huh? Correct. So Matt, you said last week that you're going to do some fishing. What happened? Well. The water wasn't to my, it was a little rough where I wanted to go fishing, so I didn't catch anything, Jack. Okay. Would have had some fish cooking tonight. And uh, what, what kind of fish were you uh, going after? Well, I was hoping to catch some um, uhu or parrotfish. Uh -huh. I was going to bake that for us tonight, but mm. didn't happen. So we I found guess, a few uh, other things. Winter time, the water's kind of rough, huh? a lot of white yeah. caps. Yeah, it's kind of rough, but you can get lucky sometimes, get a good day and go fishing. Okay. All right, Jack, um, what I'm going to be doing next is actually putting in the cream cheese. Um, what we're going to add is roughly around eight ounces of cream cheese. Uh, right now, we're, uh, we're using Philadelphia cream cheese. Okay. Usually, it doesn't come like this in the store. Um, usually, it comes in a block, but we're, we're just using this for now. Yeah. Just tell them, Patrick, you went shopping at Sodexo. I went shopping at Sodexo downstairs at Campus Center, so they, they ran out of the Thank big you. Box. Thank you very much. Well, we want to we wanna thank them very much for uh, providing all the, the goodies for us. There's another one. Where's the other one? What do you got so, got Diane, so, um, what, what is your major here at the university? Um... I actually changed from business to communication. Yeah. So I'm a communication major right now with minoring in business. Okay. Hopefully and to get out of here by fall 2004. And what uh, Jack, would you hear my dad have the vegetables? Oh, Diane, I think your microphone's not on, so. Oh, sorry. Okay, there you go. Myself. So now you're gonna have to say that all over again. Um, I'm a communications major, minoring in business. Okay. Hopefully to get out of here by fall 2004. Okay. So, so this TV thing's a snap for you, right? Being a <laughs> communication <laughs> major. Oh yeah. I get to use this for my presentation next week. Okay. <laughs> the main thing is just a smile, right? That's all to it. <laughs> and, and on this program, you got to learn how to say, mmm, mm. tastes good, you know? Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> Anything else? Um, guarantee, huh? Guarantee. Break, uh, full proof. Cake and <laughs> put it. You know, that, that's the kind of cooking the, the okay? people back home like uh, mm -hmm. this real easy oh, stuff. Just one egg. That makes good. One egg. Okay, so what, what do you got there? Cream cheese and imitation crab? That's basically it. And just make sure you mix it to a really good consistency, um, basically. Put some green peppers in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> what Matt's gonna grab is also salt and pepper. Okay. And we're also gonna add green onions to this mixture as well. And I guess this uh, wonton is kind of like a poo poo or. Oh yeah. Just tell me. Actually, um, this is like perfect for parties. If you guys don't, it takes a while. Honestly, it takes just a little bit when you're cooking and making it, but it's really good. So the ingredients, pretty simple. Uh, imitation crab and uh, Philadelphia cream cheese. A little yeah. bit of green onions. Green onions, salt and pepper. Salt and pepper and that's it. That's pretty much it. Um, with the probably salt, around roughly around two tea. Two tablespoons? No, one Tees tablespoon. Teaspoon. Okay. Teaspoon. 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have a I don't have a measuring spoon with me. Oh, right. here we go. Right now, oh, I do. Better yet, use that one. Okay. So, like what? You don't have to measure, man. Just dump it in. That's good enough, right there. <laughs> I actually classic, put too much. Classic. Actually, I actually put too much. Um, it's supposed to be like half a teaspoon. Correction, okay. half, half a teaspoon. <laughs> All right. My bad. No problem. It's been no a problem. long day, huh? Yeah, a very long day, you could say. Knife. Need a knife. Yeah, the beef's just about done here. I, I, I think you're better though. cook than I am, Patrick, so I'm not going to complain. <laughs> you know, if, if you're going to cook the food, I'm not going to complain. Oh, oh, get, I, get I'm not trying to be fancy or anything. Get that overhead on yeah, Patrick, that, man. He can really uh, wield that knife. No, um, okay, that's enough. Not sure. oh, a little bit more. Definitely better than me. <laughs> ah, no. Okay, um, not too much onions, just enough just for color as well as just a little taste. Okay. So what we're gonna do is actually mix, um, missing pepper, is there? Oh uh, yeah, Back I forgot here. the pepper. <coughs> oh, okay. <laughs> if we had pepper, we would add it, but we don't have any right now. Okay. Okay. But basically, you mix it to a consistency. This is actually when it's cooked, it's really rich. It's like a really rich wonton. Broke them out, you could say. It's pretty good. Really, really good. Um, actually, I have some already prepared with pepper. Okay. All right. So this is what we had earlier. Um, we actually use this with the one time so we cooked earlier. that's what it's supposed to look like when you mix it, right? Basically, yeah. Okay. Okay, um, we're gonna move on and actually making the one tons now. Uh, guys, got a fork. So Patrick, what you doing now? I... Or I mean Matt. Oh, oh I just <laughs> added, <laughs> added some carrots in our stir fry here. Cook that up with the beef for about a minute. And we'll add some of the other vegetables here. Okay. The carrots take a little bit longer to cook than the rest of the vegetables. They're a little harder. And what are you doing now, Patrick? I'm actually um, scrambling an egg. And what we're going to use this for um, is to seal the wonton together, basically. Okay. Um, you can use water if you want to, but for a really good seal, I suggest we use egg. Because once we cook it, it actually forms like a little... Seal when okay. once you fry it and you cook it. So, all right. Water is fine, but egg is better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, you can buy wontons um at your store. Um, I'm not too sure if they sell it like this. It's like a economy size, but um, usually they come smaller, roughly like maybe 20 pieces per package. So what we're gonna do is start with the wonton, and. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, um, what's gonna happen with your mix, um, cream cheese, and your imitation crab? What's gonna happen is just put 
a generous amount, not too much, or you won't be able to close it. And with your scrambled egg, what you want to do is actually, um, I don't have a brush with me, so I'm just going to use my finger right now, okay? Is I'm just going to actually just line the edges. So Are you going to be uh, deep frying that uh, tonight, Patrick, or just going to go through the motions? Uh, I'm just going to go through the motions just okay. for the meantime. You're not going to fry it? No. Um, no, I'm not going to fry it. Well, we, have, we have our instant kitchen, right? Instant magic. Oh, yeah, TV magic. magic. Uh, TV magic. Magic kitchen. So you just put it together and we'll show you the... Oh, yeah. Kay. Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen is you can actually fold it. Actually, try and seal it before you actually press it in. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to have an actual fold like this on both sides. Okay. So like with the egg, it actually seals it, seals it better than the water, you could say. Okay. Um, I believe I don't have a fork with me, but I, I only have spoons. So... You, you kind of... Uh... I guess I'll just use a knife. Oh, better yet, fork. Oh. Here we go. Look at that. Um, this is the best way that I found out how to actually seal a wonton is actually with the end of the fork. Okay, it's better when it's um, not plastic. <laughs> so we're going to use the opposite side of the fork and actually just do a little, how you say? Kind of um, score it a little. Like yeah, that. scores. Okay. So we're just going to score it all the way around. And trust me, this is really tedious. But... Um, What's going to happen is you're going to get a nice wonton seal and ready to go in the fryer. And if you want to be fancy, you could like do something like that. Like do some little, some little thing like that. Uh-huh. Yeah, so. And then, and then what you do is you get the, the oil really hot. Very hot. And then uh, what they usually say is you poke a hashi into the oil. And mm, when it starts it. bubbling around the hashi, you know it's hot oh, enough. Oh yeah. And then you just dump that in until just dump it's it in. golden brown. Golden right? brown. And if you have a thermometer, what we did earlier was actually, um, once it starts turning golden brown, we actually take it out of the fryer and we actually stick a thermometer inside. Yeah, for right. the beef and the pork. Yeah. To make sure it's cooked. Just to make oh, sure it's I really, see. like thoroughly cooked actually. And we made it to... No, no, no. 160 100, degrees inside. Yeah, 150, 160 degrees, and then that's how we know it was done. So but this with, is. But with the uh, imitation crab, you don't have to be that uh, particular, right? Mm, no, it doesn't have to yeah, be that hot. Because it's already okay. cooked already, or it's already edible when it's um, taken out of the package. Okay, and what does the finished product look like? Finished product. Out of our magic kitchen, huh? Okay, so just All right. put this aside. And maybe you can show us what the finished product looks like, okay, right there in the front. And maybe our overhead camera oh, can just, uh, yeah, there you go. And that's, that's what the fried oh, wonton looks like, nice and golden brown. Actually. Yeah. Very good, Patrick. Yeah, okay. And that's it. Um, well, actually, right now, we're actually going to show two types of the wontons. Okay. Um, actually, that one is the beef. And the one actually, these actually bringing out right now is actual seafood, um, actually imitation crab with the cream cheese wonton. Okay. So there's going to be a little difference. Um, the beef wonton actually kind of shrinks. The beef tend to shrink a lot compared to the seafood one where it actually looks like it's going to explode. So okay, so now you're going to put together a crispy fried uh, beef wonton. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, he goes her. I actually got one. There you go. Yeah. yeah okay. Okay, well, Patrick was busy there. What I did was um, I added all our vegetables, as you can see here. It's all nice and colorful. We have some red onions there, some carrots, yellow bell peppers, celery. Chopped them all up. And I added some mushrooms. And about how much would you say for uh, each uh, of those different ingredients? Um. If you like lots of vegetables, you put a lot. I like okay. lots of beef, so. Good answer. Okay. Depends on who you are. Okay. Um, and this is just about done, so I'm just gonna put this in this bowl here. You just cook it for about two or three minutes and it's all done. So and after you add your vegetables, what you need to do is add your oyster sauce uh, with the vegetables in there and just stir it up and cook it for a few minutes. 
And how much oyster sauce did you put in? Oh, that was the mixture we made earlier. Oh, sauce. I see. Okay, okay. I'm actually gonna cook another batch here. Should we have a eggs. pretty big class. Show you your eggs. I need to show you. Well, everybody else is So that out. is your beef with got. oyster sauce. Yeah, I'll from. put it in the front there for now. Okay. And maybe our overhead camera can zoom into the beef with oyster sauce stir fry. There it is. Mmm, looks good. And uh, we're going to have Moana come up also, huh? Yep, that's me. And what are you going to make for us, Moana? I am going to make poopoo -poo chicken. Okay. Uh, this is for my mom and dad out there. <laughs> they always wanted me to go on, but. Here I am. All right. It's gonna move over. Yeah. All right, Jack. Um, while she's also starting, I'm gonna also start with the crispy fried wonton. It's similar. You're gonna do the actual same thing okay. with the imitation crab, except you're using beef. Okay. So what I'm using is roughly a pound of ground beef. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna add roughly one more bit. Oof. <laughs> that much. One egg? Actually, I'm gonna be using two eggs. Okay. How much oil you want, Mo? I need enough to fry this. Okay, tell me when. Okay, I need them. So that's uh, about a pound of beef. Pound of beef. beef and and two eggs. Two yeah. eggs. So yeah. And then? Yeah. Um, we're actually gonna add okay. green onions as well. Same okay. thing as the last one. About how much green onion would you on? say? Um, yeah. I would say maybe uh, one fourth cup or so. Just okay. not too much. You don't want to um, drown the the taste of the beef. Okay. So that's not so bad. Okay, you want to add? I show you. Where? Show you. Um, you're gonna want to add. A tablespoon of shoyu. Okay. And that is, yeah. Hold on. What are you looking for? A cleaner tablespoon thing. Sorry. Is this tablespoon of shoyu? Shoyu. Oh, this is shoyu. Okay. And let me see. And a dash of salt. Okay. So far, kind of simple. One S pound of ground beef. Uh, salt. Also, we got in there a, a tablespoon of shoyu. Oh, sugar. And some green onions. And uh, two eggs. And oh. a dash of salt. Okay, yeah, a dash of salt. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, if you like salt, you put a little bit more no. in. No. So good. <laughs> All right. Okay, what we're going to do is actually mix this. Okay, I need a better. You got sorry. another spoon or yeah. something? Uh, something a little. A little bit more stronger. There you go. Yeah. Um. Almost like making hamburger. Oh, basically, yeah. That's that's what you're doing. Except it's going to go inside a wonton, huh? Yep. And if you wanted to, you could you can make it a, a, a pork uh, wonton also, right? If you use ground oh. pork. Yep. Any type of meat, usually, if you want to make a chicken wonton, um, pork wonton. So it's up to you, basically. Okay. Okay, uh, once you get it to a nice consistency um, where you could actually put in a wonton, there's no, you know, big clumps or anything like that. Um, same thing, um, what we're going to do is the same thing with the crab. What we're going to do is actually get a little portion of the beef. Like, um, again, not too much where you can't close it. Okay. Okay, what's gonna happen is we're just gonna put just a little bit of egg yolk. wash all around. Yeah. 
All right. So, like so. Make a good seal and use that fork or something hard. So. So you can make all different kinds of wonton. You can make like the first one you made was the imitation crab, and then this one is the beef, and then yep. you can use the pork if you want. So, yep, that's pretty much it. Other the, than the that, only difference is you probably have to uh, deep fry this a little bit more because uh, it's pork or, or beef rather. Yeah. So. And then you just deep fry it. Deep fry it brown. until it's golden brown and um, basic for the pork and the beef, about 150 degrees. Okay. I'll be ready to eat. Um, one suggestion is when you make these, it's better to eat them on um, the day that you make it. Mm -hmm. After a, after one day, it gets soggy, and you don't want a soggy wonton. Okay. Yeah. So you want to make sure it's. Uh, eat it the same day while it's still crispy or better yet within four hours of making it okay yeah how's that okay okay all right now Moana what you gonna do the poo poo chicken yes I'm doing the poo poo chicken and you can tell us what you're doing yeah I'm cleaning the table right now okay <laughs> okay <laughs> Okay, our poo-poo chicken calls for four pounds of chicken, okay. which is drumettes, thighs, any part of the chicken would be good. Okay. Okay. The flour mix that we need is, I pre-mixed everything, so it's one cup flour and one cup panko. Okay. Panko, panko is uh, bread, uh, kind of bread, bread, Powder, right? Bread crumbs. Bread crumbs, crumbs. like, yeah, okay. Where's our spoons? <laughs> so, one cup of panko and one cup of flour. Yep. And then? Okay, and one teaspoon salt, as well as pepper and garlic powder. Okay, one teaspoon each, about? Yep. Okay. Everybody got that? All right. One teaspoon of, one more time. Oh. <laughs> one teaspoon salt. Okay. One teaspoon pepper okay. and a garlic. I think I overdid it. It might be just half. But you know. And just mix that right in yeah. there. Yeah. I like mine's kind of salty, kind of bad, but that's why I like Pat. Maybe he could put extra salt in mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. Set that aside for now. Got some thighs, defrosted, yummy. Okay, what I usually do first is a lot of fat, just kind of like skin it. Oh. Okay, take all that It's kind of hard when it's totally defrosted. It's just a bunch of goo. Okay. That's what fat is anyway. <laughs> hmm. And you're using chicken thighs, but you can use the drumettes or the wings, right? Poo-poo parties, best if you use um, drumettes. Okay. Whatever. Okay, and then usually cut into bite-sized pieces, whatever you prefer. I like mine's and kind of small. So it's like popcorn chicken. Uh-huh. Okay. And yeah. with this one, all we're going to do is dip it in flour. I have an egg already beat up. I mean, not beat up, but... <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I got that so far. Just gonna just check with the thing hot. Yeah, can you get some pumpkin? I got. Yeah. So first you dip I it in the uh, in egg wash. Yeah. I kind of cheat, you know, in the dorms you only almost ready. Yeah. Just slap everything together. But that's okay. Everyone likes it, yeah? <laughs> Roommates, where are you? Oh, there she is. Malu. Mana, who's working? I think they're ashamed. They don't want their names to be said. Okay, I just put everything in. Well, so far that looks pretty easy. Something that all the college students can do. Yeah. We just had this the other night. Test run. 
and uh, how'd it go? They're all alive. <laughs> okay. Then what we're gonna do is just pretty much, it's best if you use your fingers, I don't know. Get down and dirty with the food. <laughs> okay. And then just gonna deep fry it. Okay, so you got uh, a lot of vegetable oil in there? Oh, that's a lot. Okay. About how much? I don't know. Enough to cover the yeah. chicken, huh? Okay. Okay, that's about it. Okay. So, what do you uh, what do you like about UH Hilo, Moana? I like UH Hilo because it's a cozy setting area. Everybody knows each other. Um, classes are small. Most people, you know, everybody come like from who knows on earth. Come to this small little city located, you know, in Hilo Town. And it's a cozy atmosphere. And so, where, where are you from? I am from Waianae, Oahu. <laughs> oh, okay. And you definitely recommend UH Hilo to I others. I recommend UH Hilo for those who want to be a home away from home. Okay. Okay, so can you just flip it for me? Yeah. Okay, while that's going on, while that's going on, okay, this is the sauce that I would want to sauce. Okay. It's a sauce. Okay, it calls for half a cup of shoyu. Okay. Just in luck, it's the whole bottle. Good measure. Yep. Okay. And a half cup of sugar. Okay. Put the whole thing in. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just use this one. And what else? Uh, one clove of garlic. Okay. Which is minced. One I can clove just get it open. Minced garlic. Yeah. Oh, surprise. Okay, where's this stuff? I can cut it. <laughs> yeah, I am. That's okay. You want to use know. a crusher? That's okay. One less finger is okay. Okay. One garlic clove minced. Okay. Okay, and I'll just use Patrick's leftover, but it usually calls for two stalks. Two stalks of uh, green, green onion? Green onion, yeah. Ooh. And you can put as much as you want. Yeah. And, and how do you like working at the campus center? I love working at the campus center. I've been working there for about two years now. Uh huh. Yeah. A lot of work, but. And if anybody is interested, my job is actually opening up. I'm fired. I, I'm graduating. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, um. <laughs> Ellen and her staff will be looking for a replacement for me. So yeah, go down. We're fiddling, we're fiddling oh. around with our records. Might not be graduating. <laughs> oh, there's another spoon. Let's wipe it off. Yeah. Which one is it? Okay. And what you're going to do is just mix it. So it's like, we'll pretty much caramelize the chicken. And do you have to cook the sauce, or is that Oh, ready? no, this is just the sauce. It's yep. like a Korean chicken kind of thing. Ready to go, then? Yeah. <coughs> okay. From here, I guess you're almost, you're almost done. Okay. Bed of cabbage. Okay. Shred some cabbage and make a bed. Okay. And what you're gonna do is... What am I gonna do? Okay, what he's gonna do is, when the thing is done cooking, dip it in, and merely, and put it onto the bed of cabbage. And that is the poo chicken. And that chicken. is it. Any questions? Okay, and our fin finished product, after hard day's work, will look like that. Okay, and maybe our overhead camera can zoom in yeah. to our poo poo chicken. There we go. All right. 
Oh, students are happy over this. Okay, so, so far we've had a uh, beef, with, beef with oyster sauce stir fry, imitation crab cream cheese wonton, a crispy fried beef wonton, poo poo chicken, and now we come to Ellen's favorite chili. And Ellen tells me this is so simple anyone can do it. And it's so simple there's no recipe for it and it's called super simple chili for the non-cooker or the college student first time away from home or for people like me who get home from work at 8 o'clock and the family's all hungry. Okay. Except so my husband will tell you that when I get home at 8 o'clock we go out to eat. So, what, what okay. are you starting what off I'm, with? Um, I'm browning some hamburger. Okay. And I usually use a mix of um, extra lean okay. ground beef with regular hamburger. Um, it's just a little bit more healthy. You can do this with turkey or chicken, ground turkey or ground chicken. Um, about and it's how real many tasty pounds too. would you say, Ellen? Um, for tonight, I'm, do I'm doing about two pounds, but it depends on how many people you're cooking for. Okay. And it depends on how much rice you eat with it, or whether you eat it with bread. Okay. So, this is um, this is just about two pounds of ground beef. Two pounds of ground beef. Mm -hmm. And that and you said the lean ground beef. Um, half half. Yeah, I do half and half. Okay. So one Excuse pound me. of lean ground beef and one mm -hmm. pound of. Uh, Regular ground yeah. beef, okay. Or if you're using turkey, you know how turkey comes in those double packs. Okay. And this is about a. Oh, look at that! Matt wants to be on the camera even when it's I, my turn. I like being on the camera. <laughs> okay, this is about a, a table a teaspoon of garlic. Okay. And depending on how much garlic you like, you can use more. Or if you don't like garlic at all, you can leave it out. But it just re it adds a nice flavor. Okay. So, so we're that's still browning. Minced garlic. Minced garlic, okay. Minced garlic, um, if if you're like true cooks like Matt and Moana, you use real garlic. I buy the bottle garlic. <laughs> that's why it's so easy. Okay. Okay, and, and it's still kind of browning, but I'm gonna start adding stuff because of time. This whole thing usually takes only about half an hour anyway. This okay. is um, half of a medium-sized bell pepper. Okay. And if you don't like bell pepper, you can leave that out again. But most people do. Okay. Yes, I'm done Half with that. Half a bell, green bell pepper chopped. Mm-hmm. All right. And if you're, if you're going to do this for just the family, just, you can just use green bell pepper, but if you're going to do it like for a potluck or something else, you can use red or yellow. It adds a lot of, um, it adds some nice color. Okay. And this is onion, about chopped how onion. Much? Um, this is half of a large Round onion, onion, about that. Okay. This is um, the sweet onion. And in our family, if you live in my sister's house, my sister Lois, Kelly, and Wilfred will not have onions. So we wouldn't make it with onions at their house. Okay. And I said that because I told Kelly this afternoon I was going to say her name on TV. So she's probably sitting there smiling now. Okay. <laughs> okay. So how long have you been with the Campus Center, uh, Ellen? I have been at the Campus Center now for... Tw um, 12 years, almost wow. 13 years. Seems like I just started yesterday though. So what percent of the students do you think use the campus center these days? Oh, I hope that at least, at least half, yeah. Half, or yeah. maybe more like 75%. Well, How maybe. many of you in here have been to the campus center? Oh, that's a hundred percent then. Except for the one sleeping back there. <laughs> nah. Okay. Um, it's still browning a bit. 
but it's really, and this is what makes it so simple. You just get a can of Manwich. And what I don't do you know if we're, Manwich. Manwich. It's right okay. in the aisle with the um, tomato sauce and stuff. And uh, what size can it, how many ounces? This is the um, 26 ounce can. 26 ounce can of Manwich. Right. Okay. And if you're just cooking for, um, oh, the thing went inside. Okay. If you're just cooking for you and a couple of roommates, you can use, there's a smaller can. Okay. And while Ellen's doing that, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have Diane do her, uh, what She's is that, the uh, suafai, the banana or Samoan banana soup, which is kind of like a, kind of like a dessert, right? Dessert. That's right. Okay, and the last thing you want to add are, I like your beans, okay, and um, at our house, Reed doesn't like beans, but we put them in anyway. I like to use kidney beans because it's a little bit sweet and it kind of offsets the tomatoey taste, but you can use whatever kind of beans you know you prefer. And if you use kidney beans though, be sure you rinse the beans and drain it in a, um, before okay. you throw it in because all that sticky syrupy part goes in otherwise. So you, you kind of wash it and drain it before uh -huh. you put it in, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's one, one large can. One large can. Okay. And that's it. Then you just leave the chili on until um, it kind of simmers okay. for a little bit. Oh, I forgot the chili. <laughs> How much chili do you put in? I actually put very little because I don't like to hot taste. stuff, but it's to taste. Okay, chili powder to taste. And if you like hot stuff, you can throw in a little bit of um, Tabasco sauce too. Okay. Or cayenne pepper or habaneros or whatever you will. Okay, you can also you add like Tabasco really or cayenne pepper to taste the, mm -hmm. if you like it more spicy. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, and so... And uh, then you're going to just leave this to simmer. Diane, uh, what are you doing now? Um, I'm peeling my bananas right now. Uh, this dessert is called suafai. You can just make your notes and just call it banana soup. I know it sounds weird, but we'll just go ahead and use the name, the Samoan name for it. This res uh, this recipe calls for four bananas. Okay. Um, and, and you want kind of ripe bananas. Yeah, ripe bananas. Okay. Two cups of water, and two, you have to boil the water first. Two cups of water? Yeah. Okay. And then? Um, I usually don't measure my ingredients when I cook. But I guess for this one, I'll say half cup tapioca. You can get this at any supermarket. Okay. And one can of coconut milk. Okay. I need. And so this is kind of like a dessert back in Samoa? Dessert, you can eat it anytime you like. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, don't matter. Um, I'm pretty sure my Samoan fans out there, they, they eat this like super late at night and we're talking about two o'clock in the morning. After a hard night of studying, huh? It really helps you. <laughs> Little brain food there. So, so this is kind of sweet then. Yes, it's sweet. Um, if you're a diabetic, I prefer you not to use sugar. I like sweet stuff, so I usually add in like about two mm, tablespoons of sugar. Two tablespoons of sugar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once the water starts boiling, and then. Then you just add your banana, half it. Okay. Not you making turds. Is this a popular dish back in Samoa? Oh yeah. And you can eat this for breakfast, lunch, lunch dinner, dinner, anytime you dinner, want. Or any a snack or whatever. Okay. This is something new for me. I, I first time I've ever seen boiled bananas, so. I can't wait to try this out. Um, I, I think I need the sugar. And uh, I guess while uh, Diane is uh, doing the uh, Samoan banana soup, uh, we're going to get Matt to do his amazing apple crunch. I don't know how amazing it is. <laughs> okay. 
And so, and, and so Diane, you want to kind of kind of smash up the uh, bananas with a whisk? While yes, you're I boiling? usually use a whisk, but if you don't have one, you can just use a regular fork or a spoon. But I prefer a whisk; it's faster. Okay. So you want it all smashed up in there? Yes. It needs to be smashed. Okay. Start the apples. Kind of cheated. I'm gonna head and slice some up ready. I have this wonderful tool here. No, it's not like that. I'm gonna peel, slice, and quarter apple all at the same time. And what do you call this machine? An apple peeler or slice. You can. <laughs> <laughs> apple peeler. You can use uh, potatoes. You can make thin uh, potato slices and fry them up. You can make potato chips with this if you want. So where do you get one of these machines from anyway? Um, well, I got it from cool. my dad actually, borrowing it from him. Oh. oh. Wow. <laughs> Come off. The cool. So I can call you when I want to borrow it? Yeah, there's a fee, but what I want to do is just uh, cut our apples in half. Okay. Don't cut your fingers. Just layer them in your 9 by 12 pan. Okay, so you want to use that green apples? Yeah, green granny apples. They're good, I got these at uh, Sodexo as well. Okay. I got all the green apples, Sodexo. Thank you, Sodexo. Yeah. Okay, then uh, what we're going to do is get, let's see, that's, mm -hmm. this is about, uh, depending on the size of the apple, anywhere from six to eight apples, just cover your pan, about three layers of apples. Okay. Some orange juice. How much orange juice? Yeah, we're just gonna pour about half a cup of orange juice over your apple. Okay. Measure, but that's half a cup. Trust me. Um, you just put that on the side for now. Okay. You get a bowl. I'm gonna put. Can you do me a favor? Because this is gonna take a while. Just you got a spoon back there? Yeah, just I got a spoon. Just back for that. Okay. And how's your chili coming there, Ellen? It's coming along real nicely. Okay. I'm going to put about half a cup of brown sugar. Okay. Half a cup of brown sugar. Um, oats. Okay. Uh, some Quaker oats. All right. How much Quaker oats? One cup of Quaker oats. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, about a third cup of soft margarine. Okay, third a cup of soft margarine. And, or can you use butter also? You can use butter also. Um, I haven't done it with uh, butter before, but it works. Okay. okay. Um, Make sure it's softened already. You're gonna have to mix this up. I'll put it in there to make it a little easier. Okay. Hmm. And about two teaspoons of cinnamon. Two teaspoons of cinnamon. Amazing apple crunch. It's got to be good. If it's amazing. It's amazing. Okay. Um, and one fourth cup of flour. All right. That's all. Okay. And that's it. Just mix that together. Mix it together. Just gonna put on some gloves. It gets kind of messy. I usually use my hands and wash it off, but. How's our banana soup coming there, Diane? Um, it's getting there. Almost ready. So all, it's all the chunks are all mixed into the soup, huh? <laughs> so far, it looks like banana soup.
Okay, I think it's ready. Okay. Um, you can put down half cup tapioca. Half a cup of tapioca. Yeah. Mm. Does that, that kind of thicken it up a little bit? Or? Yes, it does. And you got to make sure the tapioca is really cooked before you add in the coconut milk. Okay. So how do you know when it's really cooked? Um, there's actually white lumps in here. Uh-huh. And you just kind of clear that out, make sure you don't see anything. So you don't want to see the lumps? Nope. Okay. It's got to disappear. So you want that kind of boiling? Um, yes. Okay. When you cook this, you just want to preheat your oven to 375. When you're done, you just stick it right in. Okay. So what you're making there, Matt, is kind of like the this topping, is, yeah, huh? Yeah, this is like the topping. Just want to mix in all the margarine and all the ingredients all together, get all the big lumps out. Make sure it's all mixed evenly. Okay. Jack, I'm going to add a little bit more tapioca to it, so let's make it one cup. <laughs> so you kind of you kind of add that tapioca uh, slowly. You don't want to dump it in all at one time, right? Nope. Okay. Okay, Jack, I think the chili's done. So okay. I just want to do the last, um, the last part of it, the serving part. And I forgot when I started, I meant to dedicate this chili to Chad Atkins. Some of you may know him. Chad. And for those of you who don't, Chad makes the worst chili in the world. <laughs> it is awful. <laughs> I hope he's watching. I don't know if he's watching, but it's bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, but, so. But um, this, but this chili, your chili is. Oh. Thanks to cans, things in cans, this chili is really good. <laughs> okay. Okay, and just to finish it off, um, make it look a little fancy. This is, again, it's really easy. Cheese already comes shredded, so you just gotta open the package. What kind of cheese is that? This is um, mozzarella and cheddar, but there's all different kinds. Just go to the market and look in the cheese place and choose what, you're, what you'd like. So you got shredded mozzarella and cheddar. cheddar cheese. I like mozzarella and cheddar, so. And then oh, you so just kind of top it. You top it off. That. I don't know if you can see that. You top it off with the cheese. Okay. And then a little bit of onion on top. And onion, chopped mm -hmm. onions. Chopped onion, and a little piece of bread. And. And there you have. Super, super Ellen's easy. Ellen's super chili. Okay. okay. Now is um, you take the crumbs you made. Okay. Pass me the. And you want to spread over your apple. Okay. I should be like this. Just spread, spread it over evenly. evenly. And then what you want to do is stick this in your oven at 375 for about 40 minutes. Three. 375? 375 for 40 minutes. 40 minutes, okay. Yep. And then out of our magic oven? Magic oven, yeah, bam. Mm -hmm. so, okay. <laughs> Kick it up a notch, huh? This one can be yeah. Okay. Maybe our overhead camera can... All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add in a, one can of coconut milk. Okay, now the coconut milk is going into the Samoan banana soup. Cook the trash over. And and it comes kind of thick, does it, uh, Diane? Yes. I uh, after you add in the coconut milk, let it sit for like about two or three minutes. Make sure it's boiling. And then, and then, like I said, I I like adding sugar to it. But if you wish, just add sugar if you want. If not, then banana is sweet enough. So about how much sugar would you put in there? Um, this is about two tablespoons. Okay. Healthy tablespoons. Okay. 
and just let it boil and that's and then that's it, that's it and you just serve it in a bowl mm -hmm. okay well I think uh, that takes care of all the recipes yep. so <clears throat> we'll open it up to uh, question and answers and I hope all of you at home and those of you in the classroom uh, jotted down some questions for our guests this evening. And the uh, phone numbers are on the screen. The numbers are 974-7726 and 961-9046. So if you have any questions for our UH Hilo Campus Center staff, give us a call. Our guests this evening are Ellen, Matt, Patrick, Diane, and uh, Moana. And uh, while we're waiting for phone calls, maybe we can get our overhead camera over all the various dishes. And uh, okay, uh, Matt, uh, you want to explain uh, what we've got here again? Uh, you can see it on the screen. Okay. Uh, first, we have our uh, apple crunch here. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, oh, it went the other way. Okay, there you go. We got an apple crunch. Okay. Um, so we have some beef wontons. Okay. And then? We have some crab wontons. Okay. Then we have um, our steak uh, stir fry oyster sauce. Okay. We have um, water yeah, just in there. there. And on the end, we have a super simple chili. It's just gonna boil. Uh, Say okay. it fast, Matt. No, no, no. Say it real fast. Okay. There we go. We're a real blow up of Alan's super chili there with a little bit of mozzarella uh, cheddar cheese on top with some chopped onions and a slice of French toast or something there. And uh, Diane, uh, how, how's your uh, banana soup coming over there? Um, should I try to boil it? It's pretty About soon. Almost pretty ready? Let, let me know when it's ready. Do we have any phone calls yet? We have our oh, first phone call? caller, so we're going to take the first caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello? Hello? Yeah, where can I get that apple peter core stuff from? Matt? <laughs> um, anybody that sells a pepper chef, my dad used to sell spice. He loves to cook, so he used to buy all these cooking things. I'm not sure we can get it right now. It is? Yeah, just give it a little bit. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Okay, well, thank you for calling. And we have another caller? Uh, where are you calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello. Yes, hi. Is there any way I can get the recipes? Uh, well, the recipes will all be in our Agriculture 194A cookbook, which will be available at the end of the semester. And when is that? Uh, uh, the end of the semester will be about mid-June. No, May, May, May. I don't want you students to go to school any more than you have to. Yeah. About May. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you for calling. And do we have any questions from the classroom? I think, uh, Melvin, do you have a question today? <laughs> okay. Melvin's got a question. All right. Go ahead. Um, this question is for Ellen Cusano. Okay. Um, <laughs> I think a lot of the students at UH Hilo are wondering, what's that big thing going on on the other side between Campus Center and the new um, UCB um, classroom building? If you could just share that with us. You should have told me you were going to ask that question and bring the picture. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a, a huge covered plaza, and it will connect the Campus Center to UCB, the new classroom building. It's going to have kind of like a clamshell roof on it, and it'll be a big performance area because, you know, like during the day now, we can't do concerts and things because we have to use the library lanai and we have some noise rules. But we'll be able to use the plaza for that, and it'll be a really nice um, gathering area. We'll have outdoor seating, and when s because we'll have lava java with Starbucks, you can just get your Starbucks and come out and sit in this wonderful covered place. And we've been needing this on campus because of our unpredictable weather. So 
Okay, Thanks for asking, Ellen. Ellen, you know, we have two callers now, so why don't we take the callers? Uh, will the first mm -hmm. caller let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? Uh, that last apple thing, can you give me the recipe for that thing? The apple, uh, well, let's see, that was the um, amazing apple crunch. Uh, yeah. Matt, uh, can you go over the recipe one more time? Um, the well, you need apple about crunch? six to eight apples. You need about, uh, oh, look, there it is. <laughs> a cup of uh, oats, half a cup of brown sugar, a uh, third cup of margarine. You can use butter if you wish. Uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon and a fourth cup of flour. Didn't you put some kind of juice yeah. or something inside? A half a uh, half cup of uh, orange juice. You want to just put that on the apples before you put the um, rest of the ingredients on. Do you put any kind of oil or butter in the pan first? Uh, no oil or butter. I just put it in just like that. Okay, thank you. No problem. Bye. Okay, thank you for calling from Hilo. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Uh, I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and the question? Uh, this question is for Diane. Okay. I just want to know, uh, the bananas you put in there, are those uh, Samoan bananas or are they... <laughs> or Can you just, just tell us where you got your bananas from? Because I think you had bananas next to your house, so I want to know if you got them from next to your house or you got them from PTA. <laughs> Actually, Local these are the bananas, bananas right behind my, my house. <laughs> I planted these, remember? <laughs> nah, I got these from KTA. Um. <laughs> oh, that, that, your, your suafai really looks good, but then when you were cooking it uh, on this stove, it kind of looked cloudy and uh, Weren't your nails in the way when you're trying to make this look fine? Don't worry, uh, it's going to taste good. Thanks, you guys. It's a, you guys did a nice job. Okay. Don't Bye. forget now, you guys been eating this 2 o'clock in the morning, so hey. <laughs> oh. Bring some when you come home, please. <laughs> and and Matt's uh, the amazing apple crunch and the stir fry. As a matter of fact, just bring the whole stuff home. There's yeah, not going to be any left it. over. <laughs> the class is going to, you're going to have to come here to eat it. It's the Diane and Matt fan club. That's Losi, um, by the way. Dr. Fuji, oh. haven't you noticed, uh, they're actually skipping class. What are you guys doing at home? You should be sitting here. We're watching from the television, Jack. Okay. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for calling. And we have uh, another caller. Could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hello. Hi. Hi, from Hilo. Okay, and your question? I'd like to talk to you about the banana lady. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Diane. Uh, the bananas, you said you got it from Kentia. Yeah. yeah. You shouldn't shop there, they rob you blind. What was that? They rob you blind over there, KTA. <laughs> well, you can get them KTA, you can, them on, um, you can get them from the farmer's market, you can get them from anywhere. <laughs> you How can, long you gotta let them boil in the pot? Um, you can just kind of leave it on the stove for about five to six minutes. Mm -hmm. You, uh -huh. you can grab bananas anywhere, farmer's market, if you're down at that area. I just decided to go to KTA because it was closer to my house and I really didn't have time to go down to farmer's market. But they're actually really good bananas. Oh, that's good then. <laughs> so anyway, no shop at KTA no more, go second save. <laughs> they were cheaper. Okay. Hey, you shop at KTA where you're someone special every day. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, check it out. Okay. Keep right. it up. Thanks. Aloha. Do we Thank you. Uh, Thank you for calling from Hilo. And uh, we have another <laughs> caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from? And go ahead with the question, please. Hi, this is Luana, and I'm calling from Wainai, Oahu. Okay. Oh. And my question is to um, Diane. Okay. Before you um, make the bananas, do you have to 
put it in the hot water or can you mash it in a big bowl and then throw it in the hot water? Um, you have to boil the water first and then just half the banana and throw it inside there. I, oh, okay. I think you can, either way, it don't matter, but it's, I prefer for you to just throw it in a pot. That's the, the way the authentic That's, Samoans yes. do it, right? That's the okay, way and I just wanted um, to let Andrea know that I'm proud of her, <laughs> and <laughs> I'm watching you right now. How much can I say and hi? And we said I love all the way from Wainai. <laughs> Okay. So keep up the good work, all of you guys. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you for calling from Y and I, all the way from Oahu. And we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please? Good evening. I'm calling from Kamuela. Okay. And um, I just got the tail end of the um, recipe for the apple crisp. Okay. And um, can I just get it again, please? I'm sorry. Okay, Matt, you're going to have to do it I'll real read quick. Read it off one more time. Okay, it's about six to eight apples sliced in a nine by twelve, eight by eleven pan, whatever you have. Okay. Um, half a cup of orange juice. You pour over your apples. Then you want to mix in a separate bowl. One half cup of brown sugar. One cup of oats. A third cup of softened margarine or butter. Um, how, um one. Uh, I didn't get that. The margarine. I'm sorry. One third cup of softened margarine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, two teaspoons of cinnamon and one fourth cup of flour. And you want to mix that all together. Okay, hey, thank you. Mahalo. No okay. That looks really good. Thank you. Aloha. Thank you for calling. And uh, we are waiting for phone calls. We are coming to you live this evening mm -hmm. from the television studios located in the Mo'okini Library here on the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. And if you have any questions for us, please give us a call. The numbers are 974-7726. And we have another caller, so why don't you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hey, how you doing? I'm calling from Hilo. Okay, and your question? Actually, uh, I wanted to hire a Matt and a Patrick for my poopoo party. Okay. <laughs> so I want to know more about that um, that beef stir fry recipe. Okay, that. Oh, what are the ingredients in there? Matt, um, real quick. We have uh, steak chopped up, carrots, mushrooms, celery. I use some sweet onions and oyster sauce. Uh, for the sauce. You, for the marinade for the beef, it's two teaspoons of shoyu, one teaspoon of sherry, one and one half teaspoon of ginger juice, one tablespoon of cornstarch, two table, three tablespoons of salad oil, and you marinate your beef in that for about 15 minutes. And your oyster sauce seasoning is two tablespoons of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of shoyu, one half teaspoon of sugar, a fourth teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of sherry. Okay, does that answer the question? Uh, it's okay. whatever you prefer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's the Pro Bowl party? You say your house, right? <laughs> That's where Super Bowl was at all the year. <laughs> okay, thanks guys. Okay, thank you for calling and we have another caller. Uh, could you let us know where you're calling from and go ahead with the question, please. Hello, good evening. Good evening. My name is Conchita Kiamrao. Okay. And I live in uh, 2450 Davis Street. And I just want to direct this question to the lady in a red t-shirt. Okay. <laughs> in a what? <laughs> oh, oh, red shirt, me, oh. Diane? Okay, what is the ingredient on the uh, banana soup? Um, actually, two cups of water. I put in three bananas. You know, I'm going to have to cut you off because I think we're running out of time. Uh, the recipes will be in the cookbook.
but uh, so and the cookbook change. will be out uh, at the end of the semester, sometimes in mid-May. And uh, I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank the uh, UH Hilo Campus Center staff for joining us this evening. And next Thursday night, we're going to have the UH Hilo student government come on. So we hope you'll join us next Thursday evening. This is Jack for GE saying thank you for watching and have a good evening. Huh? I don't know what to read. But in this, that's the concert. That's the concert.